Hello all, can everyone hear? Yes. All right, we're in good shape. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Governor McMaster, First Lady, Peggy. Yes. Welcome to the Albrecht Center for Animal Welfare. I hope you enjoy your visit with us here today. Uh, please feel free to get acquainted, walk around, take a look at our animals. Perhaps you're going to meet a friend and take one home with you. <laughs> All right, we are here today to witness a very significant step forward towards an improved quality of life for animals and the people that love them here in South Carolina. In actual fact, whether you have a heart for animals or not, this legislation improves the common good for all of us and the innocent domestic creatures that depend upon our goodwill. And they certainly do depend upon us. It is noteworthy, and it says a lot about where you live, when the governor, elected officials, and we have quite a few of them here today, and I'll recognize them, and you as private citizens, take the time out of your busy days to come here and celebrate a law that creates a more humane world. And I thank you for that. This all began three years ago under the guidance of Senator Vincent Shaheen and Representative Steve Moss when the legislature enacted the Pet Care and Humane Treatment Study Committee. This committee consisted of a large group of public and private individuals and public interests, which began to address issues concerning the excessive overpopulation of animals entering the shelter system. The committee strove to improve cruelty and neglect laws and their enforcement also, study current shelter standards and rec make recommendations, expedite veterinary care in emergency situations. We're seeing more and more hurricanes hit South Carolina. We need some veterinary care here quickly. Investigate animal rescue transport conditions, regulate commercial breeding, and require judicial training. In short, we considered a wide range of subjects seeking to improve the state of animal welfare. We listened to hours of testimony from all sorts of people. We debated amongst ourselves. There was 12, 14 of us on that committee. And then eventually we whittled it all down to what we could all agree ought to be included in a bill that would be brought before the legislature. None of us got everything we wanted. We never do, right? However, I will say that with only one exception, every single one of the people on that committee, and I have served on other committees for the government in other states, really truly wanted to make progress on animal welfare. We worked hard on this. It was not just a show. What emerged two years ago was a bill that was unanimously passed by the Senate. I want to thank, uh, I want to thank um, Senator Tom Young, who was very, very instrumental in that. It passed. It passed. It passed the Senate. Unfortunately, it got stuck in the House. So that original bill got stuck in the House over a couple of things. Um, I applaud the governor's office and members of our Aiken delegation, uh, which includes Representative Bill Taylor, Representative Bart Blackwell, and Bill Hickson, who is not here at the moment, and Ronnie Young, who has departed for. Uh, greener pastures. Uh, members of our Aiken delegation because they supported everything from the start. And you may not have realized that. A lot of things go on in the legislature and you don't realize how hard your elected representatives are working. And the rescue groups that are local here in the Aiken area, Charleston, Columbia, all over the state. Immediately after the defeat of the first bill that was introduced, a hero emerged in the form of Senator Paul Campbell. And I'm sorry that he can't be here today but apparently he's locked up in Charleston. He reintroduced that <laughs> in Charleston. He immediately stepped in as a hero and uh, it reintroduced the bill in its entirety. And it was uh, passed through the Senate again. But once again, at the very last minute, two provisions were again removed, then we will fight those another day, which means the next legislative session. But for now, let us celebrate all the positive things that have come from this bill. Um, it certainly is a significant step forward. 
And I want to thank the South Carolina Animal Legislative Coalition, and I'm going to name those members. They include Joe Elmore of the CEO of Charleston Animal Society, Marley Drum of Columbia Animal Services, and also Scanna. Scanna? Scanna. Scanna. I knew I messed that up. <laughs> Denise Wilkerson, CEO of Palmetto Lifeline. Denise Wilkinson of West Columbia Humane Society. Richard Davis and Andy Wilson of Capital Consultants uh, for their wisdom, advice, patience with us, and persuasive educational discussions with lawmakers. I once again want to thank Senator Tom Young, Representative Bill Taylor, Representative Bill Hickson, Representative Mark Blackwell, and of course Ronnie Young, and other animal welfare organizations who lobbied on behalf of the animals, including the Albrecht Center. For their tireless work on behalf of these innocent creatures who offer us love and really, truly to whom, how often do we turn to for our own comfort so many times? So please enjoy your visit with us today. I hope you meet your four-footed friend to love and share your home with. And always remember when you're thinking about animal welfare that it isn't about us humans, it's about the critters. Now I'm honored to turn the microphone over to the Honorable Governor Henry McMaster, who truly is a true friend to the animals. Yeah, <laughs> she's my daughter, definitely. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Nelson. Peggy and I are happy to be here. I have to tell you all, we folks, we animal lovers like everybody here. But I made a mistake. I'd like to warn everybody. I came back from the trip a few days ago, and Peggy and our English bulldog, two and a half years old, little Mac named it after her father, was sitting out on the porch, and I made the mistake of kissing the dog hello before I kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> Not a mistake. <laughs> Y'all, there are a lot of great things about South Carolina. This is one of them. The, the way we treat our animals is a reflection of how we treat each other and what we think is important. And treating them well, uh, they, they treat us well, and when the animals are happy, the people are happy. So this, this law is, is good. A lot of thought went into it, a lot of time. I want to compliment all those involved for thinking up and determining what we need to do and sticking with it long enough to get it done. But I'd like to remind everyone here that those of us in these positions of making laws can only make the laws that you tell us need to be made. And once we make the laws, it, it's, not up to, it's not up to the lawmakers to continue being involved and push it. It's, it's the people that wanted the laws made, that want to use the laws. We will never have enough people in the government in any, any level to do all the things that need to be done, nor should it. It all depends on the people. So I, I want to thank all of you. This is a beautiful facility. I don't know the story of how it got here, but it, it, this shows the, the heart of this area. And I, I need to mention, there's not a better delegation in Columbia than those that you send from, from this area. And we're very proud of, proud of these people. They're, 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 And, and remember that uh, you want to be a good neighbor, you want to be your, your brother's keeper, you want to help help people, particularly those who cannot help themselves, and that, that uh, certainly reflects on these animals in the uh, so much. So this is a great step forward, and I want to congratulate and thank you uh, all on behalf of... <laughs> On behalf of uh, five million happy, proud South Carolinians, this is a great step forward. It will be another example of how we do things better in South Carolina. Thank you.